Howdy. Hey guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today's video is when I hope is going to be a good time. We'll see. I recently saw my friend Abby Williamson do this video and I thought it would be a very fun time to just go through my collection and find the products that my favorite creators made me buy. Also, big congratulations to Abby for hitting 50,000. I'm very, very proud of you and just ah, amazing. Caveat, YouTubers don't make you buy anything. I mean, I'm not coming into your house like buy ColourPop Ritz. Am I? But I thought this would be a fun way to go through some products I really love in my collection that I maybe wouldn't have tried out had they not been recommended to me. While at the same time sharing some of my favorite creators, I think it's very important, especially right now, to share some good faces in the community. I've gotten a lot of questions about who I like to watch just because it seems like I complain about every big YouTuber, but, um, but there are so many people who I love watching whose recommendations I really trust. Do Fairy of the Day is Hannah B. I loved you on The Bachelor. <laughs> kidding. Thank you so much for having your notification bell on. I think that's all I have to say. Grab a mug of something hot or if you're in California, um, ice and let's get into it. All right, seems fitting to start off with a thing that Abby herself influenced me to buy. It's super shock. The first time that I ever mentioned my beloved ColourPop Ritz on my channel, um, I did a little shade description in that video. I described how Ritz is a shade that's like a clear, glossy base with this kind of beautiful silver reflective glitter running throughout it. And then Abby left a comment on that video saying that my description sounded very similar to her favorite shade, which is Frog. Frog is basically the same thing, but instead of silver, it's pink. So I bought it. You know. Abby just never misses. Abby and I have very, very similar um, taste in makeup products. We both love Subculture, we both love Gemini. I, th I feel like in general, we just really enjoy a lot of the same types of products. So her recommendations, I can always really count on to usually work for me. I don't use it more than I use Ritz. Ritz for me, just because it has a more neutral undertone, I feel like it works with pretty much everything. Is this an essential in my collection to a point where I think that I need both Ritz and Frog? Probably not, but I do enjoy having both. And I think that Frog truly, it looks boring on the website from ColourPop. That's the thing. It's it's one of those shades that like like Ritz, you probably wouldn't really expect much from it just by the pictures, but I'm short circuiting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me <laughs> Robbie to Christy just needs to be protected at all costs. Christy deserves the world and Christy, like me, is a dewy bench. She and Sam, we will get to Sam's entire whole last chapter in this video in about a second, but she, Sam, and Kathleen are usually who I go to for complexion recommendations because they either all have very dry skin like me or they just like being aggressively dewy and I appreciate both things. Last year, I believe, Christy was raving about the found sealer from Tarte. Christy, I believe, went on the brand trip for this one and I have mixed feelings on brand trips about how they affect the authenticity of the people who are going on the brand trips and reviewing the products that the brand trips are for. However, I could just tell that Christy was so genuinely enthusiastic about this foundation. And even though Tarte had taken her to Hawaii to promote this foundation, I still felt that I could trust her review of the foundation itself. And that for me is the mark of somebody that I can really trust and love as a creator. I also think it's really important to note that of all the people who reviewed this foundation that were on the brand trip, she was one of the few who actually mentioned the shade range and didn't like tiptoe or pussyfoot around Tarte's shade range problems in the past. Truly beautiful. It is probably not going to be great for people who do have oilier skin. It's one of those dewy foundations that I feel like won't be super versatile for everyone, whereas I feel like the ABH Luminous, this is going to work for more skin types, whereas this, I feel like it can look a little wet on the face, which I love, but if you do have oilier skin naturally, I think this would look like an oil slick on you later on down the line. I am in the shade Fair Light Neutral, and it's a pretty good match for me. I would say I've gone through like maybe 20% of it, so I have a good amount of this left, but I have used a pretty decent amount, and this is one that I'm very excited to break out this summer. But yeah, Christy definitely steered me in the right direction with this. I guess now's a good time as any to tackle the chapter, the whole last novel that is Samantha Robin Dahl's section of this video. I have four different things right in front of me, but in truth, she's probably influenced like a good 80% of my makeup collection. The Hourglass Illume Sheer Color Trio, and I have the shade Sunset. I do think that they're coming back with this one. I know that they were reformulating a lot of their products. Samantha, like me, is a stan of cream cheek products, and this, I think, is something that's really approachable to get into, even if you don't use or love cream cheek products on the regular. I think the formulas in here are just very, very workable, and it's also one of the few, like, face palettes where I like and use every single product in here. I'm really hoping that the reformulation will be as good as this original formula, um, because 
truly wonderful. She also convinced me to try out the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I'm in the shade Oat. This I like. This I do enjoy. I don't think it's the best concealer out there and I definitely don't think it's worth the astronomical price tag that Hourglass charges for it. And I don't think that it's an effect you can't get from other more inexpensive concealers. So I do like this. I do think that her recommendation was sound. However, for me, I can't really justify the price tag. But Hourglass as a whole is something that Samantha gets me into. Sam was also the driving force for me wanting to test out the Bite Changemaker Foundation earlier this year. This I feel pretty similar to the way that I did about the Hourglass Concealer where I like it, but it's not like the best thing I've ever tried. Has it changed the way that I do my complexion as the name would imply? Not really, but this is one of my favorite formulas to do spot foundationing on. So instead of going in with foundation all over my face, covering up everything where maybe I don't need foundation everywhere, I've actually like taking just a small amount of foundation and putting it on the places I need it. So here, here usually, nose and a tiny bit on my chin. And I feel like that, if you get your shade match perfect, it looks so much more natural and so much more skin-like than just doing foundation all over your face. I think that this is a really good formula to do that with just because it's very flexible and it doesn't have like very harshly defined borders. So instead of like a very full coverage complexion product where you would be able to see where the coverage ends and where your skin starts, I feel like this blends better into the skin while still covering up redness or if I have any breakouts, this does a good job of that. So that's what I like this foundation for right now and so far I'm enjoying it. And then finally, I just like Sam's recommendations in general for cream cheek products. Uh, this is the Glossier Play Nightshine Pale Pearl. Ugh, yeah, get into it. This is my favorite cream test liquid highlighter, hands down. This is probably my favorite thing that I've ever gotten on Sam's recommendation. And it's also, besides the cloud paints, the number one thing I recommend to anybody wanting to buy from Glossier. This is just stunning. It gives you a really bright beaming glow, as you can see. However, it just blends so beautifully into the cheekbone. The highlighter I'm wearing today on camera, it looks nice on camera, but in person, this is a powder highlighter and it's a particularly icy one. I feel like in person, it just looks so like obvious that I put on a really blinding icy highlighter no matter how much I sprayed it down afterwards, no matter how much I tried to like buff it in circular motions, I just feel like this gives me the effect that I want from every single highlighter with very minimal effort. I feel like cream cheek products get a bad rap for being a little bit more high maintenance, but this one truly is just like one, two dots, pat it in with two fingers and you've got this beautiful beaming natural looking cheekbone. Another recommendation from one of my friends, I'm sure many of you guys already watch her, but Amanda. Amanda and I also did a collab video earlier this year and it's by far my favorite collab I've ever done. It was the most fun video to put together this year. I believe it was end of last year when this came out. I don't know if Amanda did a tutorial with both of the palettes or just the um, Muerte palette, but she did this beautiful deep gorgeous sultry eye look and the way that the formula performed in her video just ooh, instantly killed me. But she's so beautiful. She also just did a video talking about the collection and how they really just nailed it as a whole and I spent the entire time like yeah, they really did nail it. Because I don't love dark shadows on myself, I decided to pick up the Vita palette and I really, really enjoy this palette a lot. You guys know I love Melt's palette formula um, a lot more than their stacks. And even though this is not the palette that she was using to create the look that I fell in love with, I still very much credit me picking this up to her as well as just like Melt being artistic geniuses. But yeah, thank you to Amanda, queen of my heart. Miss Gina Schketta, I swear to God, Gina has no business being the hottest woman in the world, but also recommending $48 face mist like this. However, it's my fault for falling for it and it's also my fault for falling in love. I don't simp for any man, but I would simp for Gina Shketa. Anyways, the Farsali Rose Gold Face Mist. This, I don't, I don't know how she talked me into this because it's not a setting spray, so it doesn't really hold much practical purpose. It's also not something I would use in my skincare routine. Basically, the way that she talked about this was it's the most beautiful, dewy, luminous, finishing glow. It is, but she didn't just say that. She also showed her skin on camera and I was just like, you know what? I want to look like Gita Shketa, so I got this mist. Um, it's beautiful. I don't think that I will be repurchasing it once it's gone just because I can't really justify that. And also I have other face mists that I really enjoy. I think that the ABH Dewy set has a similar effect to the Farcelli Rose Gold Mist, but obviously A, this is a setting spray, so it's gonna prolong the wear of your makeup and B, it's not as expensive. And then something I have found as an alternative that is cheaper is the 4th Ray Beauty Glisten Up Mist. This very much is almost the same. The only difference really is the spray mist on this one is a little bit finer and just more shh. Anyways, I use this very sparingly as you can see. I've used about this much. This is like my first date mist because it makes my skin look beautiful and goddess-like. I rarely wear it in videos just because 
most of the time when I'm filming, I'm gonna wash my face off the second the camera turns off, so. Seems fitting to follow up the first Holly Mist in the category of inordinately overpriced things. Uh, Miss Nikki Tutorials and the Marc Jacobs Youth Quake Moisturizer. Nikki is probably one of the only, like, really big beauty youtubers I still watch. Um, I just, I think her personality is lovely. Anyways, Nikki works for Marc Jacobs, so I very much knew going into this that I was buying something that was recommended to me by an employee of the brand. However, I was attracted to the kind of claims and the ingredients in here. I really, really like this moisturizer, especially as a base for under my makeup. This perfectly straddles the line for me. It gives me the hydration that my dry skin needs, but also isn't too heavy and weird, and it doesn't disrupt the makeup that I have on top of it. I think this is absolutely beautiful. When I'm done with this one, I don't have plans to repurchase it immediately, especially because I have lots of other moisturizers to go through, but I will actively miss it. I just really like the texture, and that's kind of the realization I've come to with a lot of like more splurgy, expensive skincare products. Like, yeah, sometimes they're not necessarily worth it, but if you really just enjoy something, and you love the texture, and you just love the feeling that you get when you use it, then that's worth it to you. It's kind of interesting. I feel like a lot of the makeup recommendations I bought from Nikki have kind of not worked out for me in the past. She definitely is on team like matte, full coverage, full beat, and for me, that's no longer my journey in life. So I feel like a lot of the products I picked up on her recommendation, I no longer like love with my entire chest, but this. This is disgusting. I like it though. The Jackie Ina palette, can you guess? It was Jackie Ina. Dude, I bought this palette mainly just to support the collaboration. I thought it would be a good addition to my collection. I liked the colors, but I didn't think that it was gonna be like my new favorite ABH palette. When I got this in person, I just fell in love with the color scheme. I think that this is the most versatile palette that they've ever come out with. The formulation in here is top notch. I can just tell that they put so much work into this. I can tell that Jackie went into the boardroom and demanded the good formula. This is just a big favorite of mine. And I know I've influenced a lot of you guys to purchase the Jackie Anya palette, which I'm glad about. But it was Jackie herself who got me to buy this one and I'm very glad that I did. Anyone else remember when I would not shut up about the Burt's Bees Toasted Cinnamon Blush? This was a favorite from like over a year ago. So I'm sure a large majority of the people who watch me now probably don't remember this one, but this I bought on the recommendation of Kathleen Lights. This was her favorite blush for a while. She would not stop talking about this. And this is a very interesting shade. Obviously it's like a brown toned toasted cinnamon as the name would imply. I've actually come to realize it's a little bit too deep for me to use as a like a full on blush. On the face, it takes on a little bit more of like a deep kind of orangey reddish hue as well, but it still is very much a toasted brown shade. I've kind of grown out of love of using this all over my cheeks as a full on blush. The way I like to use this one is to kind of merge and marry my blush and bronzer, especially if I'm using two very different shades. If I'm using like a more like full on pink tone blush rather than a peach, where I feel like peach blends pretty well with bronzer, whereas pink can look a little bit weird. I'll do my bronzer first, I'll apply this just a little bit higher than the bronzer, and then I'll do the blush, and I feel like it just gives you a nice, more seamless gradient. But this is definitely not like a world favorite blush of mine by any means. I do still really enjoy the packaging. This is great for travel. It's just very, like I feel safe traveling with this. Um, this kind of was also Kathleen as well, but mostly when I think of who recommended this to me that I got it, it was Whitney Simmons. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur CC Cream in the shade Fair Light. Whitney's a fitness creator, but I follow her for everything, workouts and beauty recommendations included. Um, she just always has the most beautiful dewy glow going on. And it's kind of like the Tarte Found C in terms of finish. So I would say these are actually pretty similar. This is a little bit of a thicker texture on application. So this one I feel like applies nicely with a brush or a sponge, whereas this one, because it's more liquidy and thin, I think that this is definitely a sponge foundation. But yeah, this Thrive Buildable Blur. Never tried anything else from Thrive, but I love this. Miss Nisa Nisi Pisa. Not only did she influence me to reignite my love for lip gloss, so I could credit my entire like lip gloss collection to Nisa. This is my current favorite right now, the Tower 28. She didn't specifically recommend this one, but lip gloss in general, I credit to Nisa. However, something else she influenced me to buy was the Makeup Revolution Cut Crease Canvas in the shade Halo, which is the white shade. She uses this a lot, especially in her like more chatty tutorial type videos. This to me is a really interesting texture. It's a little bit like thinner and more... She just, you know, she's cutesy. It's a little bit thinner and less viscous than say like the Anastasia eye base or the P. Louise eye base. Those are a very, very thick texture, whereas this one's a little bit more fluid. And I personally really enjoy that, especially for doing cut creases as the name would imply. I know Nisa uses this one all over her eyes when she's doing a colorful look, but for me, this I really love to set down a nice lid base for a really beautiful shimmery shade. This I also really love to get yellow mattes to show up really, really bright on the eyes. So sometimes I'll do like a yellow matte inner corner and I'll put this all over my inner corner and then pat the yellow on top and it just shows up 
technicolor bright so this was a great recommendation as well thank you nisa and then last but not least you guys know <laughs> and then last but not least Alyssa ashley and the nyx can't stop won't stop foundation this i believe was a collab with Alyssa ashley so i bought it to support Alyssa's collab um i don't like the foundation itself it's a matte foundation it's very full coverage nyx i just I don't have a ton of products I love from NYX, to be honest, but um, I want to support. I love Alyssa and Armand. I just, they have really good energy, you know? They have good auras. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I would love to know what is something that I've influenced you to try out. Try and limit it to one product. I'm pretty sure it's either going to be Jackie Ina, Ritz, um, ABH Luminous. I don't know. What else damage have I done? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you made it to the very end of this video, clink, clink, bitches. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the volume inside of this bus